hi guys welcome to my channel my name is betsy oji of Fuebu, and i'll be walking you guys through how i passed my four acca papers that i took around this time last year august 2020 i was preparing for my first set of acca papers which were sbr and aaa and then by december i took sbl and apm and then i was done <laughs> yeah as easy as that right yeah so you guys um please stick on hit the subscribe button turn on the notification bell so that you can catch up all of my videos in today's video though i'll be talking about how to pass sbr just my quick tips i know you're probably already studying but i just want to tell you some of the things that i did that i think helped me to just go into that exam hall confident to pass sbr okay guys yeah so let's talk about ACCS sbr i have my notepad here <laughs> and i'll be looking down at it from time to time just because i'm trying to give you guys tips right um but i'll give you a background of the course so sbr is basically strategic business reporting it is think of it like corporate reporting think it, think of it like an advanced financial reporting if you are not new to ACCA, you would already understand what financial reporting is for ACCA. And if you have taken previous exams like I did, I already understood at least at a high level what the SBR was talking about. You're thinking consolidation, you're thinking testing accounting standards and how to apply them to different scenarios. That's basically what the exam is about. And then you're thinking ethics. So basically it covers the group accounting, which is basically consolidation, different ways it can come. So what I realized for SBR is that unlike ICANN, where we were typically asked to actually prepare, you know, the console, um, you know, PNL, console balance sheet, console cash flow, and all of that, you know, stuff. Here, I think for SBR, my first shocker was that I hardly ever had to, you know, reproduce an actual financial statement. It was more about the extracts. So the half the time, the examiner just wants to understand wants you to show your understanding of the rudiments your understanding of the concepts behind this financial statement not really necessarily you know using your calculator to just basically draw up a full financial statement for it for them to mark right so that was the first difference i noticed between this one and the icon when i took my icon corporate reporting it was more technical it was more about you know actual balancing of the balance sheet and all of that you know getting your goodwill getting your nci getting all of that stuff but here it was a bit theoretical i think so yeah so if you're approaching this exam i would advise you to be grounded in the concepts be grounded in the theory be grounded in, like understand the standards as opposed to just getting ready to start solving you might not really have to solve a lot you but you would actually be required to explain to discuss the standards with a few workings but not necessarily you know going in depth so that's really my experience with that exam so i'm going to advise anyone taking sbr to think of it less of a calculation exam but more of a theoretical exam like how do i understand this concept would I be able to discuss a consolidated cash flow statement, for example? What happens when there's some kind of deferred consideration as part of the, cons you know, the consideration that was provided by the parent company? What do I do when I have some kind of share for share exchange? Now, if you're not able to talk through this just verbally, then you have a problem already because you're not always going to just be giving numbers and, you know, calculate the goodwill or calculate this. No. So you need to understand the concept behind it. I'm taking my time to stress on this because I notice that students are, you know, so driven by calculation and you just want to start to press your calculator. Please take a step back. SBR is a is test your concepts you need to even understand the conceptual framework literally like understand why what does it even mean to have an asset these days are we still talking ownership or are we talking control like those kind of concepts like they will be tested in different ways guys that's all i'm gonna say then now let's get into the house what are the tips now that you understand how sbr is let's talk about what you should do to get this kind of knowledge now this might sound very weird but the first thing i did to be able to understand sbr was to study the pack <laughs> yes guys i know a lot of people don't like to hear that word study the pack but trust me guys even if you have one week i would rather you spend that one week just reading through that pack you can only understand these things when you read through the pack pick either pack that you like bpp or kaplan just sit, settle down with it and have an exam timetable where you are studying the pack chapter after chapter. You might do two chapters at one, you know, study sitting. Maybe you have a sitting of three hours each per day or something. Now you can decide to do that that way. But what I did then was because I had a very short time to prepare for these exams, when I took my study leave, 
I dedicated about one week to just studying the accounting part like the BPP or was it Kaplan I can't remember either one actually is fine to be honest so yeah so I studied the pack now in that pack there are practice questions so as they explain the concepts they go on to just give you examples and then you kind of see the answers to the examples. so it makes everything easier if you are doing this without um, you know any kind of lecture center or any kind of tutorial then trust me guys you want to study that pack now if you do have lecture centers which is something I also had to do at a time because so yeah at some point I took um, some kind of online learning while I was preparing for this SBR paper yes I had a guy who had actually taught me Jimo who had taught me when I was taking my ICANN exams he was also taking um, classes you know for Bratim Nigeria at the time yeah so I joined them in those classes but because you know time zones in Canada Nigeria it was confusing I was never really able to get the best out of those lectures because I was always either missing a class because it fell during my weekdays um, you know working hours or something so yes so I didn't get the best out of lectures just because of my time zones but I still tried you know to just get what I could from him and he was very helpful but if you do not have any tutorial guide then I would advise you guys study your pack and have your revision kit close by those two things you can never go wrong with even any ACCA paper except SBL <laughs> yeah I'll come to SBL later you guys subscribe to my channel so that you know how to pass SBL but I think for all other papers if you can just really have your pack and your kit you're good to go really yeah so that's the first um, you know thing about how to pass SBR so um, when studying from you know the study pack and the revision kit I would advise you to have some kind of jotter so I have this kind of jotter whenever I'm studying for any of my ECC papers. What I do is, when I read a standard, I summarize it in, like, I don't know, just one page. So everything you understand about that standard, just make a quick note. The key pointers, right? So when you read a standard, like, um, I don't know, what can I even say right now? So when you study an IAS 10, events after reporting period, you know, there's some basic things you want to take out of that, like, right? So what is an adjusting event? What is a non-adjusting event? What are, like, examples, right? and then how do you even determine when something becomes an event after the reporting period is it before the auditor signs off or all of that so yeah so all those kind of major things that you know whenever you see an IAS 10 these key pointers will just be in your mind right so yeah so something like that I just had to use that standard because it's one of my favorite standards right yeah so yeah so you guys should just have some kind of summary note where you summarize each standard because toward the exam trust me guys you will be getting confused you wouldn't even have time to be reading any extensive you know materials at that time so those your summary notes will come in very very handy guys it will come in very handy very important for you to do this one even if you don't take anything out of this just have a summary note where you summarize every standard that you study into one page just ensure it's not more than one page so that at every point in time you, you know the summary the background of that standard and it helps you when you're in an exam condition if they are testing a particular standard at least you have the major points to use and explain you know based on the case that the examiner provides right yeah so that's a key point do not miss that and then next i'm going to talk about the acca study resources available to you to pass sbr this will be two things the past questions and um, the technical articles now from the past questions what I want you to be you know focused on when you're using the past questions because already you, you know the revision kits already are past questions right so in a way you would already kind of understand how the examiner sets their questions but when you are looking at the past question from the ACC website please focus on the examiner's comments what did the examiner say were the common pitfalls of students you know that made them not to you know get all the marks that were available for a particular question that's something you do not want to, you know, repeat, right, in your own exam. So please note the examiner's comments, at least for like, you know, when it comes to the consolidation questions, what did the examiner say the students did wrongly and how can I avoid that in my own exams? It might just seem like something silly to do, but trust me, guys, when you are in an exam condition, you will remember that, oh my gosh, this thing happened in one diet. Oh, okay. So now you know not to do that or you know what to do, what to do better, right? And then brings me to the technical articles. So technical articles, as I had already explained in my previous video, <laughs> please go on to watch that video and hit subscribe if you're enjoying this yet. <laughs> so yeah so in my previous video i talked about technical articles and what i said they are are more like you know current issues that affect accounting 
and that affect the paper that you are taking so for an sbr it might just be you know standards that are you know currently being you know considered by the iasb or it might just be like top topical issues in you know in the world that affects accounting it can be anything really the, uh, there could be up to 30 or 40 articles but that doesn't mean you have to go and study all of them so then how many technical articles are sufficient for a paper like sbr what i did was about three or two days before my exam, I just went to that ACCA website. I had my phone, right? I just opened my phone on the website and I was just scrolling through, scrolling through and reading the technical articles just the way you would scroll through an Instagram on your phone. Yeah, I mean, some of us spend so much time on the blogs and all of that, reading different stories about what one celebrity did. So yeah, why not spend that time and just read the article? You're not studying it, right? So you're not reading it like it's, um, I don't know, like it's going to be tested verbatim. No, you're just reading it so that you can have an idea. All you need for technical articles are an idea. You want, to, want when they drop a topic. You don't want to be blank in an exam hall. It might just be a 10 mark question or a 15 mark question. You want to be able to just, you know, show just sufficient understanding of the topic and be able to relate it to the case. That's all. But the only way you might be able to do this is at least go, go to ACCA's website. Those technical articles are always there. Pick about 10 of them. You can pick at random really or just, you know, take the most recent 10 or something and just, yeah high level you know just scan through them read through them like i said on your phone and you should be fine really this i would advise you to do close to the exam so that if you see a question you would be able to remember and i think you'll be largely fine right for this sbr so what have i said would help you pass sbr trust me guys you want to study the study kit i know that it sounds weird to say that but it helped me so i studied my bpp um study pack i also used their revision kit but not a lot to be honest with you guys because i didn't have time to practice as much questions from the revision kit but the examples within the study pack were very sufficient to just help me understand each standard and now once i understood the standard i went ahead to summarize each standard and each you know topic into a one page summary so at the end of the day i had like you know some kind of list of all the standards and then i was just ticking them off one after the other of what i understand not extensively all you need is just you know the background what does this standard mean can i discuss this in an exam hall think of it like that right and then of course understand the principles behind the consolidations right so different scenarios be it a profit and loss be it a cash flow statement the principles typically are actually the same so it's just to understand you know the ownership when does control pass how do you fair value um you know deferred consideration or how do you determine when to recognize them in the books and all of that and also you'll be tested on the ethics right so you want to know your accounting ethics this one everybody i believe for you to even be taking acc exams you should already know your ethics right so your independence principles your integrity objectivity all of that stuff please be grounded in them and know when something is unethical and how to just you know discuss them within the in the context of the case and then uh, finally i talked about the past questions on the acca website you can just examine yourself once at least you know set yourself in an exam condition and practice just one question in three hours and see how you would be able to do how you will fare in an exam hall and i think you should be fine really technical articles i said to do close enough to the exam period just because you don't want them to fly out of your brain right yeah and i think after all of this i strongly believe you'll be fine really just and then finally now to the exam so now you're ready for the exam what then do you do in the exam hall to ensure that you pass your sbr paper i would say you to time yourself you know acca papers from what i understand they can be very very big like you can see a lot of exhibits you can see a lot of cases and you may want to start getting confused but keep yourself within the time that is allotted to that exam so if you're taking a three hour paper and you know there are going to be four questions in three hours depending on the marks allotted to each of those you know questions try to you know determine how much time you need to be able to tackle each paper so since you're taking the acca exam and it's a hundred percent paper if one question takes 40 marks, say for example, question one is 40 marks, right? You want to just do the math really. So how much time I need to allocate 40% of the time I have on this exam to this question. That's it, right? So that you are not wasting time on a question that doesn't even have a lot of marks allotted to it. At the start of the exam, do that, you know, mental analytics in your head and have your, you know, your wristwatch. You need a wristwatch. There's no way you write an exam without a wristwatch. I mean, so please have a wristwatch. Whether you're taking this as an online exam or you're physically going to a center to take it, please have your wristwatch. Time yourself. Immediately that time you allotted to that question based on the marks of the question is done. 
drop it and move to the next question you want to try and attempt all the questions please do not leave that exam hall saying oh i only was able to attempt question one and two <laughs> the chances that you're gonna pass is slimmer because you didn't satisfy the examiner's you know requirement which was attempt all questions so please make an attempt across all the other questions and the only way to do this is actually by sharing your time so that it allows you actually touch every single question that way you exhaust all you have in that exam hall and trust me 50 marks which is the pass mark shouldn't be hard to get if you do all of what i've said today Please let me know if you enjoyed this video. This is my first time talking about how to pass, you know, a specific ACCA paper. And I'm hoping you learned something. Drop me a comment. Ask your questions. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Betsy Oji of Webu is my name. I'll be happy to help you and mentor you through your ACCA journey. And until next time, bye.